Shavua Tov, and uh, welcome back. I hope that you all had a meaningful, uplifting Chag, a real Chag. I hope that throughout the learning in the past few months, we were able to connect to the to the Mahayan, to the source of wisdom, to the source, to the source of of emet, of the truth, and gain the ability to to absorb that light, to enjoy that light, so that Be'ezrat Hashem we can start a new chapter, a new year of happiness, a year of blessings, a year of Beracha, and a year of peace. It is a uh, pointless to uh, to address this very difficult moment that everybody's facing uh, across the United States the fear that has in, uh, installed a lot of people yet another challenge that we need to face that we need to adapt with to in order to understand what is expected from us and how to how to deal with it so i imagine that whoever lives in new york has received about five minutes ago just like me a message from the government saying that we are under curfew it will be a mandatory curfew from 11 p.m until 5 a.m this curfew, I don't think too many people had a curfew for a very, very long time. But the curfew is coming to tell us there are structure, there are rules. And again, I'm telling you, please take a moment to reflect on yourself. Take a moment to absorb and learn from what you've encountered and what you, have, you were exposed to during the day and understand that the night is not a time to just run away from yourself, but it's a time to introspect your actions and reevaluate where you stand and absorb and categorize everything you have learned during the day. This is how I view this message of curfew. Really, it's a time of the night. At night, stay home, take time to think. Pause. Apparently, we haven't paused enough yet. So, comes Hashem and tells, at least us, to the people of New York, it's really time for you to pause and reflect. So, this being said, I would like to, uh, to continue where we left before the Chag, before Shavuot, and added one element, an element that's extremely important that we didn't touch. We spoke about the Kedusha, the holiness of the Torah. We spoke about the connection there is between our Neshama, our soul, which is a combination of all the letters of the Torah that Read, reorganizes itself as our actions are done, as we behave. And when we connect to the Torah and we connect to Am Israel and we're able to become one, us as a people, with the Torah and Hashem, so we get rejuvenized by this strength, by the light of the Torah, by the awe of Maaseh Bereshit. But that light that HaKadosh Baruch Hu brought to the world, the light of the tzaddikim, the light of the, of, of the righteous, the light that allows a person to see the emet. And as we said, we get, we get an injection of life once again. I will, I will be a little bit technical, but it's something that we need to understand 
and that it is fundamental in our belief in the Torah, in our respect of the Torah, and of Hashem. We know that the Torah starts with the word Bereshit. Bereshit literally means at the beginning. The Chachamim, especially the Ramban, come and teach us that there are very deep secrets in the word Bereshit. The word Bereshit really comes to tell us with the letter Bet. Bet is the B, right? The letter Bet. And Bet is the second letter of the Torah of the Hebrew alphabet. The first letter is Aleph. So if the Torah starts with a bet, says the Ramban, it's because the whole Torah comes from an Aleph. There has to be an Aleph in order to be a bet. So if the whole Torah starts with a bet, that means it is the continuation, the prolongation, the explanation, the extension of the Aleph. What is this Aleph? Where do we find this Aleph? Rabbi Yaakov of Iskali explains in his book Torah Tamilcha that the Aleph that we are referring to is the Aleph of Anochi Hashem Elokecha. The Aleph of the first commandment of the Ten Commandments. I am Hashem your God. Anochi Hashem Elokecha. And explains Rabbi Yaakov Iskali that Akadosh Baruch Hu created the world with the cosmos, then he created the planets, he created the planet Earth. On planet Earth, he created a human being. He created the ability within the human being to connect to him. He created the world as a geography. He created Eretz Israel. He created Yerushalayim. Inside Yerushalayim, he had the Bet Hamikdash. Inside the Bet Hamikdash, he had Kodesh Hakodashim. A system that is in place that comes from the will of HaKadosh Baruch Hu to reveal himself to us. So when we talk about the Anochi Hashem Elokecha, I, I, I am your God, says Rabbi Yaakov Skali that this is the source, this is the beginning of everything. The first commandment of the, of the Ten Commandments is the beginning of everything. We have 613 mitzvot that are gathered together to make Ten Commandments, and those Ten Commandments are combined and are condensed in the Anuchi Hashem Elokecha, in the First Commandment, and the First Commandment is condensed in the word Anuchi, and the word Anuchi is condensed in the letter Aleph. So everything stems and comes from the Aleph. What does Aleph represent? If you look at the letter Aleph, you have a middle bar and two little yud, one coming up and one coming down. This structure is yud vav yud, which means 10, 10, and 6 in numerology. This is how you write. This is how you structure the letter Aleph. If you, so the Aleph, the first letter has in it the name of God, right? You, we know that the name of the Tetangam of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the name of Hashem, is Yud, He, and Vav, and He, that equals to 26. So the Aleph has already in it the name of God. Anuchi Hashem Elokecha, which is the first commandment, is coming to tell us, to tell us, I am your God. I am connected to you. We are one. If you think about it, it's a puzzling thought. Hashem comes and tells me he's with me. He is with me. I am Hashem, I am your God that gives you the strength, that gives you life, that gives you the ability to have all the kohot, all the, all the kohot, all the strength that you need. I gave them to you. We would think that if anything, there is a God, and you have to go and find him. If you're able to, find him. A lot of people go around the globe trying to find, find the truth, find the truth. Here the Torah comes and tells us all this book, 
that converges. Everything converges towards this Aleph. It's coming to tell us, you don't need to have to look for me. I come to you. I live with you. I live within you. I give you the strength. This is what the Torah represents. Now this Torah, we might think, is a universal code. However, this is not the case. The Mechilta of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai tells us the following, that when we received the Torah, every dibur, every dibur, every commandment was an essence, was like an angel, like an angel that came to each and every individual and told the person, this is who I am, this is, the, my, this is what I represent, do you accept it? This is what I mean, this is what I mean, this is what's involved in my, in my essence, these are the repercussions in your life, these are the derogative of what, I'm, what, what I, I really mean, do you accept? And each and every person said, yes, I accept. What we see from here is that the Torah, the Torah has an individual, intimate relationship with every one of us. Yes, it's true. We, each and every, we all read the same text, but the text reads us differently. The text speaks to us each and every one of us, individually and personally. The Torah, the Kedusha of the Torah, the Emet of the Torah, is not, just, is not just a book of history. It's a powerful essence and presentation and representation of Hashem in this world that's with us all the time. This is what we're celebrating. This is what we accepted during Shavuot. This is what we connected during Shavuot. We connected, we celebrated our connection to Hashem. We are one, like we said in last year. I open my eyes to what? To your event, to your truth. For this specific reason, the way the Torah was given, to us in Har Sinai, in Mount Sinai, was very, very odd. As we know, the Chachamim tell us that Kadosh Baruch Hu took, took the mountain, elevated the mountain on top of the, of the people and told us, if you accept the Torah, great. If not, I will drop the mountain and that's it. That will be the end of your people. Weird way of uh, making us accept the Torah. So the mundane idea is that we, we weren't sure, we didn't know. So Hashem didn't want us to really have to make a choice, make a decision. So he made the decision for us. But this is not the real understanding and meaning of Kafa Emar Kegidi. The way we were given the Torah is basically coming to teach us that there are things when it's the truth, it has to be there. It's undisputable. The truth is undisputable. When you face the truth, when you understand the truth, says the Rambam, nobody can, can fight it. Nobody can change it. Nobody can, can argue with it. The Torah was given in a way where there's no argument, where there is no questions asked. Why? In order to install in each and every one of us through the, that way of giving us the Torah, through that, in, that enforcement, if you will, the ability to connect to it, the ability to be attached to it, the Chachmei Haimet explained that there was no doubt that Am Yisrael would have accepted the Torah. 
everybody was accepting the Torah, we were happy to receive the Torah. But how do you connect to it? How are you able to see the emet at times where you don't want to see it? At times where you might choose to look for what's good, to, but not for the emet. Which glasses do you put on? Do you have any glasses that allow you to see the emet? Came Hashem and enforced the Torah, injected in us the ability to connect to the truth the ability to differentiate between the tr true and false. He brought back, brought it back to us, the pure essence of Adam Arishon before he sinned. He took that neshama, he took that potential and spread it, sparkled it across all the neshamot of Klal Yisrael and gave everyone the ability now to choose the emet and see the emet. It is so difficult, Rabotai. It is so difficult to be able to see the emet, to be able to connect to the truth. We tend to, we tend to lie to ourselves. We tend to, to live life of confusion, life of illusion. Ketzel over. Shlomo Amelech says a person that doesn't realize his potential is like, a, is like a shadow. What's a shadow? It's a reflection of something. You are the reflection. Your whole life was a reflection of a potential that was never there, that you never really grasped. And like a shadow, the shadow disappears. Shadow disappears and finish. We tend to live our lives like shadows. So Hashem, Hashem comes and reminds us on Shavuot that the power of connection, the power of the truth is in each and every one of you. All you have to do is one thing. Recognize, recognize the Torah. Recognize the truth. Recognize that it's within you. Appreciate the truth. If you don't appreciate the truth, you will not see the truth. You can only see it if you appreciate it. Going back to our last year, appreciate wisdom, appreciate the Torah, appreciate the relationship with Hashem. This is what we connect to. And this is what we're taking with us and carrying with us now every single day. That rejuvenated power to be able to find the truth. It is time, Rabotai, it is time that we apply the Aleph, the Ani, the Anochi, the Aleph of, and when I say I, we said in Hebrew it means Ani. Ani is one of the names of Hashem, one of the names of God, the, the, the me. The real me is who? Is Hashem that's living inside of me. That also requires emet. That also requires Torah. That also requires Kedushah. When we look at what's going on, on the, in the streets, we get confused. We don't understand anything. Chaos. Chaos everywhere. Everywhere. As if this pandemic wasn't enough. The street represents where we belong in our mind and in our heart. It's coming again to teach us and tell us, where are you? The first question that is asked from Hashem to human, to human, Ayeka, where are you? What are you hiding behind? If you continue to hide, you will not be able, you will not be able to see the truth. So open your eyes, use this momentum, 
This momentum of emet. This momentum of aleph. The aleph that gives life and that injects so much wisdom, so much blessing, so much abundance in the world. That aleph of anuchi Hashem Elokecha, the aleph that gives life to the Torah, that gives life to Bereshit Bara Elokim et Hashemayim et Ha'aretz. The aleph that comes before the bed, not only is a representation of the Yud Kevavke, but it's also the aleph of anuchi, of ani. This is the ani that's in me. All the Torah that's about to start, all the, the, the Torah that I am writing comes from within me. But the only way for me to be able to connect and write that Torah, write the Torah Hashem wants me to write, is if I apply a rule of thumb. I need to look for the truth. No matter how painful or how uncomfortable it is, now is the time to crystallize and consolidate that blessing that we have received during the Chag. This is what the Torah represents. And this is what we have to rejoice for. We know that in Har Sinai, we received the Torah, like we said, in a way that is undisputable irrevocable just so that we can see the emet that's undisputable and irrevocable to have that hush that sense if you want to be able to, to sense to have to see the emet you have to have the sense of emet of truth inside of you it's the feeling a person feels when he doesn't understand why but something's not right or i don't understand it fully but this is emet this is real don't ask me why, but I sense it. That sense, that, that sense, that extra sense that we have is the power that's injected in each and every one of us, in the Ani that's in every one of us on Chag HaShavuot, during Matan Torah. But there is a second step to receiving the Torah. We know that at the time of Achashverosh, the Jewish people were facing a very, very challenging time. And they prayed, they fasted, a big miracle happened. And they received the Torah again, but this time they chose it. It wasn't brought to them. They already had it, so they didn't really have much to do. That's it. It's, with, it's within us. But they chose to proactively engage with it. With love. How did they get there? Basically, that's what the question. Okay, so it's injected inside of me. The sense lives within me. How do I proactively engage with it? How do I turn on that, that power, that core that's so strong? Rashi says, They, were, they engaged with the emet from the love, from the love of the miracle that was done to them. We would have thought that it's, they did teshuva. There was a gezerah, they did teshuva because they did teshuva, so they, they, they were able to receive the Torah again. And this time with love. But Rashi says something else. Rashi said they did Teshuvah and the Teshuvah brought the miracle. They, re, they introspected their actions and understood what they did wrong, corrected it, fixed it, prayed for mercy. The miracle of Purim happened. The impact of the miracle of Purim awoke love, a tremendous love for what? For Hashem. The love to see Hashem in a way that's undisputable. What's a miracle? A miracle is something that you cannot understand, but it's here. It's, it's, you can't deny it. Something happened. Something crazy against the laws of nature happened. This is not random. Something special just happened. 
that feeling of awe, that feeling of love for that moment is what triggered the, the Bnei Israel to now engage with the Emet and choose to put themselves and, and start a journey of Torah, a journey of truth with love. Not out of fear, but with love. Engage with Hashem with love. What is that coming to teach us? If we want the emet, and we want to be able to love the emet, love the truth, love Hashem, we need, we must be able to recognize the miracle, to open our eyes and see the miracle, understand what's going on, understand what's happening. If you can see the miracle in front of you, whatever that miracle is, whether it's being alive, being healthy, being married, having healthy kids, it doesn't matter what it is. If you can see the miracle, and let that miracle trigger an emotion of awe, an emotion of love. That emotion is the starter that turns on the engine to want to connect to the truth. So our responsibility today, we have, we have the fuel. It's in each and every one of us, full gas. Full gas for the entire year. Now we have to turn on the engine. And in order to turn on the engine, we need to focus on the miracle, on a miracle. And a miracle does not always have to be something that is huge. It could be a small miracle, something that is beautiful, something that is undisputable. Something where I see an action, a situation where Hashem is basically telling me, I'm here. We just have to open our eyes. If we can connect to such a moment, we trigger the engine. We put the glasses on and we start a journey of truth. We start a journey of clarity, a journey of good decisions, a journey of strength a journey of power, a journey of growth, a journey of success. Now is the time, Rabotai, we cannot go back to sleep and we cannot disregard the moment and the dynamic and the momentum of what we're living. Let's all find that unique miracle that's happening to each and every one of us. To turn something that is so undisputable to something that is so lovable and so uplifting. Be'ezrat Hashem Me'akadosh Baruch gives us the strength to see clearly the emet, to see clearly the miracle. Doesn't matter what it is. And be in so much love for Hashem. Wow, look what he did to me. Unbelievable. I'm so happy. It's incredible. And by the way, it doesn't have to be something that's coming up. It could be something that has happened to you already. And that you were in shock of, that you were in awe of. Look at it. Connect to it. Elevate yourself and say, oh, Shem, I love you. Now is the time I want the truth. Open my eyes. And you will see the, the light in front of you. This is a promise from Hashem himself. I love you all, and I pray that each and every one of us can have those glasses on to see the emet, to choose the emet, and to become part of the emet, which is part of Hashem Yidvarach. Shavua Tov, Mazal Tov. I love you all. Please be safe. And Yehi Ratzon, Yomara El Dai Letzavotenu, Veig Alenu Begeula Shelema, Mimitoch Midat Arachamim, Amen Amen. Hatzlachah to everybody.